Welcome back. <laughs> Nearly near summer. Look at this. I've got an ice cream. Um, not just any old ice cream. This is uh, 26 grams of fat in this ice cream. It's been years since I've anything like that. And, um, and it's 60% of calories and fat, actually. So what I thought I'd do would be in this program was to do some magic. You see? Put it into the black traditional hat. Put the traditional thing over the top. Get a spurtle and... And just lift it up and look at that. One gram of fat <laughs> and only 4% of calories from fat. Ready for it? Okay. Come on. <laughs> Drop it. It's actually quite an easy thing. Um, the, I'm going to do a cranberry pear ice. And it's a water ice, really. In fact, two things. Let me tell you first of all about the frozen whole raspberries. I'm going to do a raspberry water ice very simply with a little gelatin in it and it's very attractive for children and you can put a little mint and freshly ground black pepper on it if you, ah, yeah, really black pepper if you want to. Um, I'm going to here, the, this is the cranberry water ice one uh, and the pear. Uh, I'm going to take some mint leaves here just to be able to give a startling colour and take a, a pear, a nice Bartlett pear and fan that pear out over the top of a purple puddle, <laughs> which is made with blackberries. And so that's the puddle there. And I'm going to then do this ice cream, which is just with pears and ginger, and it, it comes out and looks really neat. It has a most wonderful aroma to it as well. And so little fat, but you compensate for the fat by all these bright notes. And we'll get on to that one a little while later. Ready? Okay, come on. I needed help for the, the simplest things. I felt like a prisoner in my own home. If you or a loved one suffer from limited mobility, we have important news for you. Operators are standing by to qualify you for a brand new power chair or scooter at little or no cost to you. Mobility Products Power Chairs, they turn around tight corners and move easily over uneven ground. They'll give you your freedom back. I picked up the telephone and within 48 hours I had a chair and I had my freedom back. Specialists are standing by to take your call. They'll work with your doctor, your insurance company, and Medicare to put a brand new power chair or scooter in your home at little or no cost to you. No paperwork, no cost, no nothing was there. And if you call right now and qualify, you'll receive this handy all-purpose grabber free. The grabber is yours free, the call is free, and you're under no obligation. So pick up the phone and call Mobility Products right now. Call 1-800-971-2884. That's 1-800-971-2884. You're watching Glam Care's Kitchen on American Life TV. Make sure things are not too hot. How are you doing? Good? All right. Here we go. Uh, the first thing first, um, I've got a pear, and this, if you take a look at that pear, I mean, there's all, pears are not all created equal. This is a Bartlett pear, and so uh, all you need to do is just skim uh, the skin off there and cut the doings out of the middle of it, and got a pan on the heat here, and with one cup of water and two-thirds of a cup of sugar, and actually, you know, you can't make a good water ice or good fruit ice without sugar. It's the combination and the right amounts which are very important, so make sure you get those in really done properly. Okay, then here is the debris or debris. I was trying to work out earlier which would be more correct. You know, for, with my accent, it is debris. Um, no, it isn't. It's debris. I can't remember. It's been so many years. All right, so that's all the shavings off the outside. Anyway, in the core from the ends, just don't throw that away. Put that in there because I want to get the syrup going beautifully with all of those ingredients. But I'm going to add something more to that as well, and this is where the surprise comes here. Here's the ginger root, which we've been having a look at from time to time, and I'm going to take um, pieces the same size as a quarter, and about five pieces like that, and then um, pass a knife through it so that it chops up fine. I want in a very short space of time, as this is going to come to the boil, <laughs> Let me just make sure it comes to the boil. Um, that this will, will 
um, take all of the ginger out of it so as to be able to give a lilting background to the ice cream itself. And in order to be able to take that fat, you've got to have these strange flavors in there, yet not too much, so that it belts you between the eyes. I don't like that. And here, then just bruise six leaves of mint. That happens to be spearmint, but um, or regular mint would be. And pop that in and stir that around. Now, I, I can smell the mint and the ginger here, and it's just lovely. So that's doing well. Now, here is crystallized ginger, just in passing. Um, you take the same root and it's, uh, it's cooked in sugar until it crystallizes. It's very hot. Uh, well, it seems to me very hot. I, I'm, I'm like that. It's not as hot as pepper flakes and things, but it's hot. But it's wonderful in an ice cream. Just a straight crystallized ginger ice cream is just neat. Just think of that. Just tuck it away in the back of your mind. All right, so that's doing well. Now, let's have a look at the blackberries. Now, the blackberries are going to give us just a, a large amount of the coloring in here. And what I've got is a pound of blackberries altogether. And those have been squashed through a good stainless steel sieve. And I say good because if you've got, you know, a rough old nylon sieve in some way, it'll still, it'll do it, but it won't stand up to this kind of pressure for long. And I do lots of things like this. When you've got that through, you've got about a cup full of sieved juice underneath. So make sure that it's sieved. And if you, if you put all, I mean, you could put all the seeds in as well, but get underneath your plate if you've got false teeth. You may not have a rosary, but people who do find that very discouraging. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Here is the pear that has been peeled, you know, that we did before. And we've got a pound and a half of these pears. Let me see whether I can just juggle these into the top. I know it doesn't look as if they'll go in, and they might not, but... You put these in and leave a couple of pieces of pear behind. The purpose is, of course, because we want to fan out the pear and make it look great on a presentation point of view. So we'll just pop that in. Good. And um, put the lid on. Now, you, if you haven't got a, a processor or a blender, will do, but you might have to add just a little bit of juice to it to make it work. All right, run it. Now, as it's running round like that, get one tablespoonful of lemon juice. It, there's an airlock that happens in this every now and again. Um, one tablespoon air of lemon of airlock <laughs> and stop it. Good. Wonderful. Now that's, it is a beaut, I mean, I can't tell you how great pear is. It's got that wonderful smoothness to it. You know when you eat a good ripe pear, how smooth and textured that is. That's why it's so important. All right, let's take this across here and just slosh that pear syrup. Well, it's not syrup, but the pear puree into that dish there. All right. Now, just give it a little whiz around and mix the pear in with the blackberry. I'm going to show you a little later. We're going to go to the store and have a look at some of the other fruits that can do this. But um, this, this is just a, such a terrific combination, a really lovely combination. I, I want to take just a little bit out of there because I want to make the puddle later on. You know, it, it's sort of pear ice cream in a puddle. I thought that was a kind of charming blackberry, blackberry and pear ice cream on a puddle. It sounds like it should be in some nifty restaurant menu. Good. Oh, the smell of this is just fabulous. All right. Now, I'm going to combine that. Now, we sieve the syrup. Now, bear with me. You know, uh, it would take about 15 minutes for this to boil down to the extent and extract all the flavors that it really needs. It's like making tea. And somewhere around here. Good. Let's get the measure. And what I'd like to do is to, is to actually boil that down until it has only two-thirds. Now, there's obviously still some liquid left here but I want to take it right down until there's just two-thirds and the syrup content of that has strengthened the smell of, of the ginger and the mint and the pears. I mean, if you cooled it, it would make a great drink. Okay, now this then, this is the sieve syrup. Now, this sieve syrup um, goes then into this mix. Now you've got the whole thing. It's just, it's given... <laughs> It's given just enough sweetness to be able to make it spoonable. If you don't add that sugar to that level, you can get to the place in which it crystallizes 
and it, it very hard and it's not nice to get out at all but this one will make it easily spoonable as you'll, as you'll notice okay well that's good now let's have a look at the other one this is a uh, if you've seen this in the stores you know it's a cranberry a big uh, sort of um, bottle of cranberry and I don't know how much this is 48 fluid ounces okay cranberry and raspberry and it's a mixture of the two now I got that and I put two sachets uh, little packets of gelatin, unflavored gelatin, into there and just heated that up so that it was, it was um, nicely, so that it would almost set if it was made into a jello. Pour that into the pan, put that into the deep freeze, all right? Now here's the one that has been put into the deep freeze beforehand, see? Here, this is kind of like Bambi on ice. You know? And isn't it an attractive um, thing? There, there's this crystals. So put it on there, and you'll notice um, I just pulled it out, and I pulled it out of the deep freeze just before we got together today. And um, so this is easy to cut. It's also nice and warm where I am. I'm draped over here. My tie is going to catch fire any moment. Um, and just make this these little squares. The, the smaller they are, the better. Now, okay. Now what we're going to do is, um, is uh, well, we'll leave that for just a second, and I'll do this first. Um, this, if you're making the pear ice cream, can you switch tracks for a moment? This is the cranberry raspberry, okay. Um, you can use one of these instruments where you put ice and salt around the outside, it's got an aluminum sleeve in it, put it on the top of one of these things, and then it does its thing. In 15 minutes, you pour that mix from there into it, and it's done. But if you haven't got that machine and everything else, there's a less uh, complicated way of doing this, and that is the, you have this special sleeve thing, which is like salt and ice, which is put um, in to the deep freeze. It's solid now, and so it's just the same as that, but in a, in a less complicated way. And then you simply take the the sieved mix here, well not sieved mix, but the, the actual mix that I've made, pour that into the top. Sorry, madam, for not having the time to go. I've got, a, I've got a lady out there who loves me to go round and round with one of these things, but just to let you know I have it. Okay, and then there's a paddle unit on it, which fits down into the thing like this and just goes round, you see, and scratches the stuff off, off the walls. And then you put the lid on the top. <laughs> There we go. And, um, and then you put the handle on top of that. And the handle fits in in a special way. Gosh, I'm a sailor and you'd never really believe it, would you? And you turn the handle five times, right? And then you set up a timer uh, wherever you are in the house, which calls you back to the job, and say about five, six minutes. Don't, there's no fetish about that. And then every now and again, when it goes beep like this, you come back and give it another five times, over about 20 minutes. And then it's nice and solid and uh, go in the fridge. Okay, let's get back to this stuff. Here, um, I've got <coughs> another one of these uh, little trips into the, into the small processor. You take, this, the, you take this stuff, which is little tiny pieces, and, um, and just drop it into a... Uh, you can do it in a bigger processor or some other thing, you know, blender again. And it, it's so easy to do. And now we want to whiz this up. It's, it's got that little jellified uh, content to it so that it's going to help it to get a nice feel, a mouth feel to it. We'll run it for a second. So we just run it round like that and it comes down into this aerated, fabulous mixture. It's almost like a mousse. All right, fine. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. Look, there. See how moose-like that is? It's, it's just beautiful. And um, I, look, I'll do some more of this and then show you how that actually gets in the mold. Um, let's go to the supermarket and look at some of the other fruits which go so well together and make great um, fruit ices like this. Okay, over to you, oh great one. Well, thank you, Offendi. <laughs> All right, now, when you're in the fruit department, there's something special that can happen here because you see, I'm hoping that what I do with you is to get you excited about the idea of making fruit ices. Well, in, when you're standing around here, think of it in this term. Um, 
think of things in their fruit content and their acid content. For example, um, a pineapple is really quite sweet, especially if it's nice and ripe like this one is here. Um, and lime is very acid, obviously. So you put lime and pineapple together as an example. Uh, this one that we're doing at the moment, either the Danjou pear or the Bosque pear or a Bartlett pear, blackberries or raspberries, and that shade of ginger just moving into it. Just terrific stuff. How about this one? This is the Nashi. This is, um, they always come in this funny little thing to protect them. This is a Japanese pear, and this is actually, just to cut through and show you, you see how crisp and white that is? It's a wonderful looking flesh and very little seeds in the middle. Uh, this makes wonderful one. Imagine this with the, the acidity of the strawberry and this bland sweetness of that pear together. Just terrific. <laughs> banana, obviously, very high in sugar, and, and a kiwi fruit, you must by now have seen into here, such a surprise, that beautiful green, so this melting, buttery, yellowy, beautiful, with just tinges of the green with a little flecks of seed through it, T wonderful stuff. And then finally, although you had to add some sugar to it, because it's very low in sugar, the avocado. And the avocado and lemon together go very nicely, but then you add sugar to that as well, and you can get a fruit ice, which is quite remarkable. So look at, try and look at the fruit in that kind of way. Try and look at it as sweet and sour, and put the two together, and then throw in a little bit of ginger or nutmeg or something, a cinnamon, just to, the things that you like, all right? Make it great, all right? Back to you, Graham. Isn't that, isn't that great, you know, with wonderful flavors, just terrific. Now, here's the one that we were just doing, just whizzing through the machine. And I've got it all gone through there now. What you do is you take some frozen raspberries, cut and a half of frozen raspberries, and, um, and lay them in the bottom of a mold like that. And you're the same sort of mold that you, you'd make a meatloaf in. <laughs> well washed out. And, um, and then uh, scrape this frozen slush, really, is what it is, um, into the pan. But don't think it's got the gelatin in it. It's not just a question of freezing the liquid, but it's, it, it's done that way. You then spread it out, pick it up, drop it down on the counter. Make sure that there's no airlock in it. You know, just want to make, it's not Deep Space Nine stuff. Um, just put the lid on there and pop that away in the fridge. Get that nice and cold, okay? Now, I've got that one, and I've got the other one, which I've done in here, too. So, we can have a look and see what it looks like. The long one is quite simple. Break the top, pull the sides out just a little bit, push them in, turn it upside down, and pray. <laughs> and when you ever saw a great tape that's been in every blooper program ever. There we go. Oh, look. Come on, I want all the straw, all the raspberries on top as well. Oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, fine. Good. Um, and it comes out, looks great. <laughs> it really does. Oh, and just turn the handle every five minutes. Let's have a look at the other one. Um, plate. Where's the little plate? You then, and this is the scoopability that goes on here. You've got, this is what it looks like when it's done. I've got to take one little pear here and <coughs> just simply slice the pear thinly through, uh, get a nice piece of greenery, a spoonful of the, to make the puddle, right? just there on the dish, just spread the puddle out, put the fresh pear on the top like that and <laughs> come on, push it a bit. Go on, and just push it out like that so that it, it spreads out as a fan. Spread out. Be a fan. Go on. That's nice. All right. And then get a spoonful. Where is it? One of these little scoops. And a spoonful of the ice cream on there. And another one. You can actually run with three scoops of this one. It's so good. Ah. Doesn't that look neat? Okay. The other one can be sliced in, you know, like wedges. You know, just, just a sort of sandwich loaf thing, and the kids love it. And don't forget the, the um, freshly ground black pepper and a little bit of mint on the top for you and I. Okay. Come and look. 
This is a photo of our first lumber liquidator store. We didn't have a fancy showroom or an expensive location. Our goal was simply to provide great hardwood flooring at the best possible prices anywhere. Today, as the largest direct retailer of hardwood flooring, we're still not fancy and a bit out of the way, but we continue to have the best hardwood flooring at incredible prices. Two and a quarter inch solid oak utility grade flooring, only 99 cents a square foot. Call or go online for your free catalog. Call 1-800-651-1649. That's 1-800-651-1649. If laughter truly is the best medicine, we got something that's more important than all of those things put together. What? Our love. Now shut up. These guys are the strongest medication available without a prescription. You got change of this. <laughs> How do you think you got that title everybody calls you? The fat one. That's the great one. The color hunters. This weekend on American Life TV. You're watching Graham Care's Kitchen on American Life TV. Remember, the whole concept of this is so that you can build something complex and creative. Now, this is uh, complex and creative, lots of fat on it. That's classic, you know, a good raspberry ice cream, lots of cream in it. And I know it's delicious and I'm not knocking it. Okay. Let's have a look at the numbers. Um, if you had that ice cream, it would be 389 calories, the classic. This one just tips the scales at 207, so we've got quite a drop. Um, in fact, that was the 26 grams I mentioned earlier, one gram in this one. Carbohydrates are 44. This goes up because of the sugar content in order to be able to make it spoonable. And I'm sorry about that, but that's just the way it is. And uh, then the, the percentage of calories from fat is 4% instead of 60%. Great change. Zero cholesterol, no animal fats in it at all, and one milligram of, of sodium. So, well... I mean, I, I suppose the sodium sort of comes up out of the ground into the raspberries, and you can't sort of completely do without it. Okay, here we go. Great color. It's, it's the sort of in color, that sort of um, deep maroon. Hmm. Look, when you taste it, roll it over your tongue, because this is different. And what you're going to sense, you'll sense the creaminess of it. Because it's really the mouth feel of the pear, which is so smooth, um, and we'll get to you, and then you immediately feel the black currant, uh, the blackberries, and then that hint of ginger, and just a tang of mint on the side. Boy, I'll tell you, when you get into making fruit ices like this, it's just a real winner as a springboard. Don't forget to springboard. <laughs> When did you first actually sit down and have an ice cream? I mean, uh, uh, was it at grandma's? I'm just, I, most people seem to remember grandma and a scrubbed wooden top in a farmhouse kind of situation. And maybe shortcake or strawberries and ice cream. And it's way back, you know, two or three years of age. I don't know whether you have anything like that. It was a bit different for me because I didn't eat ice cream until after the war was over in England and I got awfully sick on the beach at Brighton because I ate too many all at once. But anyway, we won't talk about that. But they are memories and it's with, about that I want to talk to you now because, you know, we've got velvet memories, the memories that we like to take out and stroke. Um, they feel so good. It's, it's a real ice cream. It's a really good example of that one. And we like it. We really like it. But do you know something? Um, it has a problem because velvet memories are comprised of things which I call below the line. A little while ago we looked at things which were above the line in cookery and those were called bright notes and now we're going to look below the line in cooking which are called velvet memories. So think of some fats uh, and think of the intensity of the fat. Um, fish oil is fat but that's very light. Lard is quite light um, but it, it's getting a little harder. Butter is a little bit harder still. Coconut, now, is when you start thinking about coconut in terms of fat, it's really, you, the character of it is so strong. In salts, I could start with something as light as mustard, and I could go with something as salty as soy sauce. You know, and I go to sort of minus one and to minus four according to intensity, with minus 10 being maxed. 
But in sugars, I would start with things like fruit juices, like we did here, and I'd wind up with something like chocolate. <laughs> now, the big thing is to trade off. When you're actually doing dishes like this, what you do is you say to yourself, instead of the, all the fat and all of the sugar, I'm going to put a little ginger into that to sort of perk it up a bit above the line. I might put some mint in as well to be able to help it. And instead of the mouse round fullness that comes from the fat here in the intensity, I'm going to put pear in there which has the texture which helps me to be able to develop it. So it's a trade-off. Anything that is below the line here is a velvet memory and is probably likely to trap us into something either fatty, salty or sugary because we associate it with some great memories when we were very young. Trade your memories for some new experiences above the line with these mints and gingers and pears and fresh fruits. Makes a tremendous difference. Well, there we go. Oh, I can do that in a moment and get some nice fresh stuff right out of it. It's such a neat idea. And summers are coming. Let's hope it's a better summer this year. All right? Till next week. God bless. Have fun.